Bienvenidos and welcome friends and future lovers, my name is Crossway and today we're going to be doing a complete beginner guide to Hair in Vroid Studio. If you're very new to Vroid or you just want to learn all about the basics to hair, this is going to be a great video for you. I am going to touch just about every checkbox, slider, and option there is for hair in Vroid Studio, so I'm going to be moving pretty briskly, but at the same time, it's still going to be a very long video, so I hope you'll stick with me, and let's get into it and start covering all the basics. So, first things first, the very top of the screen, you've got your hair editor, and obviously this is going to be the place where we're going to edit our hair. I'm going to start us off by adding a procedural group. A procedural group is essentially a cluster or a group of hair that is going to be all uniform and you can manipulate the colors. You have your base color, your shade color, your highlights, and your outline. I don't have an outline on right now, but you have those options there. You can duplicate the material, and so if you want to have different color procedural groups or individual strands of hair, you can color them differently if you'd like. Each procedural group does create a bunch of strands of hair, which can be manipulated individually to an extent but generally procedural groups are considered a group, so they're all going to be edited together. So here I'm going to show you that I've created a second procedural group, and I'm going to make it green just so we can kind of distinguish between the two because I'm going to be messing with a lot of different options here, and I want you to see how they're different compared to the base. I'm going to take the green and just flare it out, and that's going to help us just distinguish what I'm doing here is adjusting the mesh, sometimes known as the grid. And these have lots of different adjustment points you can pull up and out. So I'm simply going to just pull the green out and then I'm going to manipulate the bluer side here. So starting with texture parameters, you've got your width. And that only manipulates the width of the texture. It's not going to manipulate the actual hair objects themselves. So it's only the texture. You have the option for the highlight and then how that texture can be offset within the quote unquote object of each hair. We're going to move on to hair parameters. You can increase or decrease the width scale. You can make thin or thicker hairs as well with the thickness scale. Our next option is twist amplitude, and that's going to add twist to your hair to varying degrees, as well as the twist interval is going to do a similar effect here. Smoothness is going to be pretty self-explanatory. It's going to smooth out your hairs or make them more blocky and low poly, depending on if you want to drop that slider down. The next sections are your cross section and your curve, and that's going to manipulate how the hair kind of flows and bends. Um, you may not notice at a glance the cross section doing much. And that's probably because I've got a big thick procedural group there. But you are going to notice when I adjust the curve how each of these default options lay. And you can see in that little grid there that there's adjustment points for each of these. So if we take straight, for example, and see how it's kind of curved, we could actually make it more pointed, or vice versa if we could take a pointed one and make it straight and flat. Uh, I'm into the guide parameters now. I think these first few are pretty self-explanatory, the height and the offset. Conformity is how it conforms to the, the face, basically. So on the X or Y axis, depending on which one you're doing. So as I mentioned just a minute ago, you can adjust those articulation points for the curve, no matter whether it's set to straight or fluffy or what have you. So for this side, I'm going to leave it super straight and flat. I'm going to up the length a little bit, but you can make it longer or shorter. You can adjust the position around the head or around the grid, as well as the interval that the hairs appear. You can also change the center point on the X or Y axis, which can give you some really fun results depending on if you want kind of a sweepy look to your hair. If you want to manipulate the hairline from the top down, you can do that. 
and the number of hairs also are pretty self-explanatory. It's literally the number of hairs that are going to show up in that procedural group. Uh, there's three thickness sliders there. They're not going to be as helpful to you as the upper thickness ones, so I'm going to recommend you ignore them. Feel free to play with them if you would like. You can change the parting length as well as the parting sides, and that can give you some varying results as well if you like to have your parts kind of spread out or non-traditional from the top of the head there. The curliness I feel is pretty self-explanatory. The flow is going to give us a really nice bend. So you've got a lot of options for flow and how that sweeps across the head. If you get too crazy with your sliders, yep, you're going to get something like that. So keep that in mind. But flow is really fun, especially if you want to just get in a quick procedural group. It can save you a lot of time from manipulating all the hairs around. Something I'm noting here on the green side now is how you can have your mesh actually go upside down so you can pull it up and get more curvy bits you can pull every other row and give it even kind of a kinky look so there's a lot of adjustments that can be made and if you want to hide individual hairs you simply just click the little eyeball on the left side and you can hide or show those hairs that are hidden So again, I want to show you these materials, keeping them separate for now, just so we can keep them distinguished. Here I'm going to manipulate those points again that I mentioned earlier, and you can make them flatter, pointier, and you have to think of it from the left side as the top of the hair to the right side as the bottom of the hair. So mine is slightly pointy, but then super pointy at the end with kind of a bump in the middle there. You can choose individual hairs from within a group, as I mentioned before, and manipulate them. Uh, you can manipulate a lot of different aspects, including the material, the width, the thickness, the twist. So if you want to create a group just for, just for ease and then manipulate some individual hairs, you can do that. You can toggle the visibility by right clicking instead of hitting the little eyeball. And you can also toggle not just at the hair level, but at the complete procedural group level. Now, something I just didn't, didn't really mention is you can rename not just the groups, but also the hairs. So I want to take that into account if you need to distinguish your groups. Uh, if you want to do bangs and you know, long hair or top of the head and bottom of the head, um, you have a lot of options there. You can also clone a group or individual hair and it makes an exact copy that you can manipulate as its own entity. If you have a procedural group, you can create a freehand group from it. That's also in your right-clicking context menu. And as I mentioned before, you can manipulate the individual hairs. So I'm changing the materials here. So some of those greens are now blue. You can also right-click and delete if you need to delete. I'm going to go ahead and clone this one because I like this big chunky sweepy one and I think you guys basically have the necessities down when it comes to the design tab here. So taking that clone, I change the position to sweep it around to the other side and I'm going to go ahead and give these some little points. Just a little bit. So as you can see that Adjustment point on the right didn't go all the way down, so it doesn't make a perfect point. If you pull it all the way down, it will make a true point. Otherwise, we're going to have a little bit of flatness. So feel free to mess with those articulation points and see what kind of styles that you can come up with. From a freehand group, we can also adjust the mesh, just as we did with the procedural group. But this, you're going to actually be drawing directly onto that mesh. That's a little pencil tool up there, and I'm going to draw some really quick long hair just so you can see what that looks like. You can go as long as your mesh. You can't draw beyond the parameters of your mesh, but you can draw anywhere within the mesh in really any kind of design or direction. 
you can also use the mirror tool in the top right, so you can do an exact mirror of whatever you're drawing. And I'm just going to mess with these so you can still see that even though we mirrored them, you can mess with them individually or as a group, whatever you need to do to get the look that you're going for. You can adjust these positions on the X and Y axis as you need to in case you drew it a little bit off or the position seems to be a little bit off. It's up to you. As I mentioned, you can draw all kinds of stuff in any direction. So we got some squiggly sideburns. We got some long guys in the back. So a lot of options. There's a bone tab I'm going to skip for now because that is a little more complicated, but let's get into the texture. So we have two textures. One is the blue and one is the green, which we had on this front screen here. And now that we're in here, there's a default image and a layer by default. So the default image is that picture you're seeing on the right side. I don't recommend that you draw or manipulate that until you really know what you're doing, but you can freely use the layer and you can also hit the plus sign to add a new layer and draw all over that with whatever colors you want your hair to be. Or if you want to add new styles, like I'm just going to draw some wavy bits and kind of shade this side. So I'm going to do uh, a light side and a dark side. Each hair is kind of composed of two sides that make up one whole hair image. So you can draw all over it and see how that's going to look on the left side here. And again, you can also change the base color, same as you could on the design tab. And you can change the shade and the highlights and so on. So whatever's going to suit your needs, feel free to mess with those and kind of get the, the style that you're looking for. Uh, do note that if you put highlights to black, you will have no highlights. So if you're trying to hide those highlights or you don't like having any highlights, that's a great way to do it. On the right side here, you've got not just your brushes, but you've also got your layer properties and opacity and your composite mode. So I'm just kind of clicking all through these so you can get an idea of what they look like. And I'm going to do a linear burn and I'm going to duplicate my layer and add a multiply. So that's going to give me a unique look and you can just layer and layer and layer. Uh, too many layers will probably give you just a dark muddy image. If you need to export or import an image, you can do that. Um, I'm going to just kind of rename the default image so you can see that, yep, we can rename them. And I like to name my layers as well so I don't confuse them, especially if I'm going to have multiples. So you can also use the erase tool, same as the brush tool, and change the width and opacity of those if you need to. Again, I don't recommend doing this on the default image, but fine to do on the layers and kind of play with it to see what kind of image and style that you're going to want to get ultimately. The blur tool works. It is super resource intensive for some reason, so I don't recommend using it. Um, you may want to learn how to use Photoshop or an external program if you want to have blur in your hair. That's just my personal recommendation. So I'm going to go back to this freehand group, and I know we've got kind of an ugly mess here, but uh, I want to show you some more options. So you can also right click and flip if you have something on the wrong side, um, in addition to cloning. I'm going to choose my other material, and I'm going to give us some little hairs. And I'm just trying to show you here that you can squiggly, 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 and there's a correction tool here. It looks like a little band-aid. What that does is straightens out or adjusts your adjustment points, and that bottom option there in the little menu is adjustment points directly. So you can see every single individual adjustment point. And manipulate those however you want so if your drawing skills aren't great you can still go in and manipulate those either with that little band-aid tool or the individual adjustment points whatever's going to be easier for you so I'm gonna delete that group I'm gonna add a whole new group just because that was a really messy one I just wanted to show you all the squigglies and crazy designs that you can make uh, note that you can manipulate this mesh both X and Y axis as well as Z up and down. So you can contour the face, you can make some bumpy bumpy bits. So I'm going to make a little ponytail for our friend here and 
arms. I'm gonna twist it up, so maybe it's more of a rat tail, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm gonna just use my adjustment points on the mesh, bring that up to the head, and again, you still have those adjustment points on the individual hair, but we're gonna use this to go into the bones, and you can see all your groups here on the left side. I don't recommend using generate bone group until you really know what you're doing, so I'm going to check my little box here, I'm going to create a bone group. And so now I've added that hair group to a bone group. On the right side you've got your bone count, your fixed point, your stiffness, your gravity, and your hit radius. You're mostly going to mess with the bone count and the fixed point. Bone count obviously is how many bones there are. And the fixed point is where the flowiness of the bones begins. So we're going to go into the camera and exporter and we're going to choose a pose so we can see what that looks like. So that's what it looks like with the bones in it. Your character is walking or running. You could also add wind if that's something you'd like to do, just to see how that's going to flow. This is really good if you're going to export it into another program and not just use these for still images. So I'm going to use the same one that we just made. And I'm going to make some sideburns that are twisty twirly a little bit. So, I'm using all the tools that we just talked about. I'm going to use those adjustment points and pull them up. Pull the mesh up just a little bit for the whole group and bring it in. So, same thing, I'm going to clone and then I'm going to flip. So, I'm kind of using all the tricks that we've just talked about. I'm going to make that ponytail super thick, super wide, just to kind of distinguish it from the sideburns there. And you'll notice that, uh-oh, I only have that one hair in the group, so that's not going to be good. And I made it really big, so the bones aren't really doing much. And wait a second, they're not even on the right thing. So you're going to need to check your freehand group again and add those hairs to the group. So it's a little tricky. you got to actually choose them and then add hairs to bone group with the group selected at the top. So now that looks better. So now we've got all of our hairs with bones in the bone group and they're all flopping around like they're supposed to be. So a little tricky with bones but I wanted you to be aware of how those bones work. I will be doing more advanced tutorials like I said so keep an eye out for those if you've got more questions on bones because I'll be doing that a lot more in depth in the future. So I am untwisting this hair giving us kind of a more traditional ponytail look and as you can see the bones still do their job still floppy floppy as it should be as I mentioned before you can add wind X Y and Z axis you can crank that up as much as you'd like uh, or as low as you'd like and you can even go into the negatives to have the wind blow in the opposite directions if you'd like so I hope this was helpful for you if it was please give me a thumbs up if it was not, please give me a thumbs down, and I will see you all in the next video. See ya!